Hey Russ, uh, this is the tutorial for Forces of Attraction. Um, very cool uh, little arrangement here. Um, and I've written a chord chart for you to follow along visually with um, this kind of walkthrough. And um, all the information you need is in this chord chart. And this tutorial can kind of, you know, it only makes sense when you refer to the chord chart. So take a look at it. And uh, you'll see a bunch of information on it. It looks like code or something. But uh, if you're familiar with a little bit of music theory or not, um, it should be very informative after I'm done explaining. So um, on row one, you'll notice that it says one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And, and that is something that you can read as you scroll down past the red line. You can see all of the chords in this song as they happen, when they happen. So every chord is lined up with an instance of time. So if you were there counting along one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then you'll notice that the chords all show up at a very specific time. So if you're counting out loud, or if you have a metronome going, or if you, you know, just take it real slow and just kind of consider how, how long each chord is, you'll know exactly what comes, when it comes, just from reading this chord chart. You wouldn't even have to actually listen to the recording to, to know how the song kind of flows. There are really only uh, two sections, and you'll notice that you have some light gray and you have some light blue. And the light gray sections are all one chord progression. And the light blue sections are all another chord progression. And those two chord progressions are the only ones in the song. So you don't have any other variation from that in terms of the actual chords. But within each of those sections, there's a lot of different kind of ways to deliver those sections. And I'll go through that. So as you notice, the left side lists all the chords out one by one. But on the right side, you'll notice something that says song structure on row eight. And starting on row nine, right below song structure, you'll see it says intro, guitar enters, and then blank blue section, and then strings enter. This is gonna take you through kind of the, the song and the way the instrumentation um, is done in the song, how it's arranged. And um, it can help you kind of see it in maybe like a little bit of a condensed way, what um, goes where. And that way you don't have to read the entire long description on the left hand side. And um, when you read through the song structure, you can also take into consideration, you know, when you might want to get louder, when you might want to get softer. If you're the only person playing and you have to carry this whole thing, then you can consider it like when you want to use a fuller chord, maybe like all six strings and play louder, or maybe pull it back and just play maybe the sixth, fourth, the sixth, fifth, fourth, and third strings, depending on the the chord shape, you know, some of them are, are muted. And you can just decide to pull it back and strip it down and kind of have it build or, you know, um, kind of be chill, depending on, you know, where you are in, in, the, in the arrangement. So as you go through the song structure, um, you'll see that eventually, oh, I forgot to write this, this um, is going to be, it's going to end right there. And you notice on the right hand side, okay, a lot of information here, there's a picking pattern listed. So picking patterns, there's only two picking, there are only two picking patterns in this song. I call them picking pattern A, picking pattern B. And after you learn kind of how to play the light gray section, light blue section, you can probably disregard A and B and sing it because you'll just actually know how to play each section. And picking pattern A and B, I've only written them out just so that you can see and count along with what I'm going to show you uh, shortly. Last little bit of information is you see all the chord shapes written out in, in uh, the black section on row 21 on the right hand side. And if you know a little bit of music theory, I have the chord numerals. So that's those chords in terms of what their relationship is to the key of the song, which we're in the key of D major. And then I've got the chord name and then the chord shape. And within the chord shape, you'll see a lot of different, you know, things. If you've ever read Tab, you're very familiar with this. It goes from sixth string to 
first string and where your fingers are on which fret. And some of these chord shapes have got little brackets in them. And you, you might see brackets you know, in the picking pattern here and there too. These brackets are just to show you that these are optional. You don't really have to play them, but you can use them and you can tastefully kind of incorporate them if you uh, get to the point where you, know, you want to kind of beef up your version of this with some more complexity. So um, I'll take you through the chords first, each one of these chords. And before we're going to play, excuse the uh, amp buzz, before we're going to play, you're going to tune your sixth string down to D. So that's matching the fourth string. And that's because we're going to use this drop D tuning to play um, these chords. And so the first chord is going to be like this. D major, 0, 0, 4, 2, 3, 2. And then in the next chord in the song is going to be similar. It's we're going to move the 4th string over to the 6th uh, string. And then the last one is going to be a G major chord. And I've written a few different versions of this. You could do this one, which is just 3 strings, 6th, 5th, and 4th. And then um, you might be inclined to add the second and first string. You might be inclined to just leave all these off and play kind of a more G, uh, traditional G shape um, modified because of the tuning. And that would be 5x0003 instead of 5x0433. They both work. And in some cases, you might want to play a more sophisticated sounding G major, as your G major 7. A little bit more dissonant and, you know, interesting. And um, you'll see, you know, when I throw those in and when I kind of take them out. The guitarists in this song, they don't really keep things consistent. They, um, they play certain things kind of consistently, and then other things they really like to kind of mess around and... and emphasize different strings or um, kind of include the first string and the second string sometimes and then leave them out entirely another time and uh, you'll see you'll see so the first thing in terms of actually playing the song now is the light gray section and these chords go like this okay they're going to go from the D to the D over F sharp to the G you can pick whichever version of G you like, okay? But the important thing here is that you're going to begin to pick to this pattern. 1 and 2 and, and 4 and 1 and 2, 3. 1 and 2 and, and 4 and 1 and 2, 3, 4. down this way, 6th, 5th, 4th, and then I skip to the 2nd string, and it's going to sound like this, 6th, 5th, 4th, 2nd, pretty easy, right? So that's 1 and 2 and as I'm counting along uh, to the beat. And then after this, I'm going to play the 3rd string. So that's what I mean by, you know, the picking pattern. Once you get that down, you'll just associate that with what you're playing. You know, these chord shapes you're playing. You won't be thinking about the pattern too much. But in the beginning, you know, if you um, find that you're struggling with this at all, it's really important that, um, I don't know what level of uh, finger picker you consider yourself, but it's really important if in the beginning if this is a struggle for you to count along while you're playing. That'll keep the rhythm very, very consistent. And you won't... Uh, have a question as to what goes where. 
because everything's written out, everything is clear in your mind, and you know exactly what note comes next, when there's a silence, and when to pluck, and all of that. So um, that's one delivery, okay, of this chord progression. Now, here's another version where I go. super well just yet but um, what I did there was I was going instead of like a completely um, full D major like this with another F sharp here I left this open so I left this kind of just off so that you can have an open fourth string and then I did the same pattern and then I snuck in the index finger right here on the fourth string it was on the third string, if you remember, and I played these open. And then I snuck it in there from the third to the fourth, third to the fourth, like that. To get the hammer on the chord. And the hammer on is just the two and the three of the D major scale, if you know we're in the key of D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, two, three. do that a few times but not every time and uh, it's a little tricky because you have to sneak that finger from the third over to the uh, fourth string and you can hear if you listen really closely the guitarist is kind of um, you know sneaking that finger over you can hear it um, then the next chord is just which is your D over F sharp and sometimes I'll do six fifth fourth sometimes I'll do six fifth fourth and Sorry, sixth, fourth, third. Sorry, sixth, fourth, and third string, or sixth, fourth, third, and second string, or sixth, fourth, third, second, and first string. way is actually just six fifth fourth six fourth third six fourth third but then pluck these all at the same time on beat three so one and two three four 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 if you want to keep it real simple you can just do that one and I'm sure your friends and in the wedding will still appreciate it. <laughs> um, if you want to really mimic the piano part, uh, you can actually do this. And that's a simplified version of what the piano is playing. You know, I would have to do some weird finger thing if I wanted to get everything note for note and translate the piano part uh, one for one over to the guitar. But, you know, that was just me playing a basic D major shape, D major over F sharp, and then, and then the G shape. Kind of added this uh, third fret on the second string there. So three, five X, zero, zero, three, three. And getting that constant picking one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and that'll make it sound a little bit more like the piano. But all the other versions I showed you before the piano version, I think that's pretty much the way you want to go if you want to do what the guitar player is doing. Then as you go through the song, you'll notice the light blue section, okay? And the light blue section is going to have these chord shapes. B minor 7, okay? Which is X, 2, 4, 2, 3, 2. And then sometimes B minor 7 add 4, which is X, Two four two three zero. And I lift up my finger a little bit so I can expose the first string. Sometimes it's just B minor seven. 
sum time does B minor 7 to B minor 7 add 4? And, and really it's up to you, it's your prerogative. And then, um, the next chord after this is just your D major again, and then, and then your G. But the difference is this time it's going to be only two beats, one and two. flipped where the first section you had a chord for four beats and then two chords for two beats each. Now uh, in this section you have two chords for two beats each right at the beginning and then you have the G chord for four beats. So if I count it all together it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. third time with this uh, light blue section. It's only two. They never go to a third time. But uh, what did I just do there? So in the B minor 7 shape, I'm playing the fifth and first strings together at the same time. And then I'm playing the second string by itself. So one and, one and, the one I'm counting out in the context of time. One and two. And on B2, I have the fourth and third strings much easier to just go one and two, one and four, one and two, three, four, and one and two. Then you don't play on the and of two. One and two, one and two, and three, and four, and one and two, and three, and four, and one and two, and three, four. Last version. One and two. song it just goes after you play the light gray section a bunch of times um, I actually tell you how many times um, it'll just go to end the song and now you notice when I say uh, on row 19 columns S through X it says the guitar enters and that means that in the original recording the guitar comes in right after the piano is doing this kind of solo thing and it says loop 3x means which means uh, you play that three times, and each time you play it is actually already two times. So three times two is six times total through that chord progression. So um, what that means is you just play through D, D over F sharp, G six times before the ending. If you want to get it exactly uh, to the number that they're doing in the original. Now, the last thing I guess I could uh, mention is you know, there are a lot of different instrumentations that as you go through, um, I kind of mentioned this already, but, you know, the guitar enters after the piano um, on both row 10 and row 19 in the song structure. And you can consider it and think, you know, like, if I'm carrying this song by myself, like, do I kind of 
build it in certain points or do I pull it back in certain points? These chords can all be played in stripped down, kind of more bassy or warm sounding parts or fully with all of the strings available to you, all the way up to the first string, every single one of these chords, you know? You know? And even if you want to just do a strumming version, that's like totally cool too, so. You know? If you want to kind of change it up, I don't know. It really depends on kind of how you want to uh, carry the song. With one instrument, you kind of sometimes think, think if you want to go beyond a basic version how would I kind of bring in some of this complexity to make the song kind of swell and ebb and flow, you know? And so those are some things to consider, maybe in the uh, quiet sections or in the guitar only or in the piano only sections, you can just bring it down to the sixth, the fifth, the fourth, and the third strings, you know, just, just those. And then maybe for the larger parts, you kind of get louder and then you know, to mimic when the strings and all those other instruments are coming in, you can use all six strings. So that's just something that I would think about. But uh, up to you. Hopefully this uh, walkthrough for the, the chord chart and uh, just all the demonstration is clear. Um, if not, you can always you know, shoot me a, um, an email and uh, let me know. And appreciate you reaching out and I hope this uh, goes well. Your friends are very lucky to have you playing uh, this nice little song for their, their uh, special day. So uh, take it easy and, and uh, uh, good luck with the, uh, with the performance. All right, break a leg. Bye.